46. New film. Let's get to The Nun 2, which came out late in 2023. It's directed by Michael Chavez, who also directed The Third Conjuring and The Curse of La Llorona. And it stars Tessa Farmiga, Jonas Bloque, Storm Reed, Anna Popplewell, Bonnie Ahrens, a few others. And the synopsis is 1956, France. A priest is murdered. An evil is spreading. The sequel to the worldwide smash hit follows Sister Irene as she once again comes face to face with Valak, the demon nun. So we did review the first one on the show back when it came out. You can check that out. I liked the first nun more than I thought it would. I don't think it's amazing, but I do think in terms of all of the Conjuring spinoffs, it's one of the best, which isn't a high bar, but still one that sticks with me more so than others. I think that the atmosphere was good. I thought it looked good. The score, I thought, even though the horror aspect were mostly jump scares, I thought for the most part it was still done fairly well. The convent castle setting was great and very atmospheric, and it built that world very well in that unsettling mood. So I was looking forward to this one, sort of. Like, I wasn't dying to see it, but I was like, all right, they're making a new one. I'll check it out. And I don't know how a lot of people feel. I think it did get mostly middle of the road reviews. I didn't love the movie. I thought it was a little disappointing, all considering it's not horrible, but I found that the horror side of the movie was so bland, so forgettable, so obnoxiously loud, cheap jump scares with a loud sound piece or a camera movement. It was very, very lazily done in my opinion both editing sound work everything the journey of Tessa Farmiga who I like I like her a lot in everything I've seen her in I think the journey it's interesting in terms of the concept and the story like her traveling across Europe trying to figure out what's going on but I think what worked so well about the first one was it was contained And so it felt in some ways like a haunted house movie, just with a nun and like in a castle. And that's what I really liked. But in this, you never really get time to settle in anything and anywhere. And everything with Valak, who I feel like she's barely even in the movie. Like in the first one, maybe she's used too much. But in this, it's like she's barely even there. And she's mostly just in paintings and like in the background. And then full frontal out of nowhere and it feels very careless in how they're trying to present her build the mood build the scares and the fear of her where she is and since it is so supernatural and she's traveling across like europe or however long a distance it feels less and less believable of the spirit following this girl around whereas in the first one obviously it's supernatural i get that and fantastical but at least in the context of the first one, you're like, all right, she's sort of constrained to being in the convent. You're not going anywhere else. And so that made it more believable and grounded in a way. And in this, I feel like I was really losing track of where they were, why they were there, why should I care, where Valak was supposed to be, like, what's her connection to these things. And so it passed the time. It was marginally entertaining but i do think that as well as in the first one the third act is by far the weakest it's like all right we need to make this i guess you could call it almost like stephen king's it where it's this big blockbuster-esque ending with a lot of effects where i won't spoil it too much because it is still fairly new but the final showdown with valak and tesa formiga also quick thing storm reed who i think i saw her first in wrinkle in time I don't like her. I think she's not a very good actor. Sorry. I've seen her in a couple other things too. And every time I just feel she seems very phony to me. And I get she's young, but at least compared to Tessa Farmiga, I think she's way better. So that part of the movie, I was like, this is where I'm officially out in terms of the third act. Whereas in the first Nun, it really got way too big in terms of special effects and goofiness and I was really enjoying it up until that point. So the third act in both, as I said, are the weakest parts. 
it's still worth watching if you have seen all the other Conjuring movies or if you like sort of a Catholic horror. It's fine. You know, it's not offensively bad, but I was hoping for a little bit more. The teasers and the posters got me way more excited than maybe what should have been, but I was went in hoping to really enjoy it or prove people wrong and not really. So, yeah. Also, quickly, Michael Chavez, I don't know why they keep hiring him. Like, the third Conjuring is the weakest one of the three. The other spinoff, La Llorona, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, one of the weakest spinoffs, and so is this one. I don't know why they keep hiring him. He's not horrible, but I think he's so vanilla in his direction. Very sort of sloppy, very incohesive in a lot of ways. So, yeah. That one is a two and a half out of five.